Hey, what's up? So uh, today we want to go over the uh, CTRL, also known as the controller input file. And why does it matter? Why should you care about the CTRL? Well, the other problems are connecting one, two, three, 20 different devices into your arcade machine. And you just had all your controls mapped out ready for MAME, only to find out everything gets flopped around and your controls get thrown all over the place. Well, the CTRL controller file takes care of that for you. And I'll show you how to use it. And to me, I believe it's one of the most powerful tools inside MAME that you can use. You can have everything stable. You no longer need to worry about it. You need to worry about your controllers being swapped everywhere. And I got a file ready for you. I want to show you how to make it. And it's going to have four different controllers you can use for inputs. Now, this is going to be for X input controllers. So it's going to be for your Xbox controllers. It's going to be for anything that reads as an X input. I have these three bit duos, and they can also go into X input as well. And it's going to be really easy. We'll take a file, drop it. The link will be in the description below. And that is it. You're going to have a plug and play ready for all your games. The only exception is going to be your fighting games, but I will show you in a future video on how to do that. And I'll show you different ways of doing that. So you just pick whichever style feels more comfortable for you. Okay. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started and get you set up to where your controls, you'll never have to worry about where they go again. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on this. So we have our main UI up. We have all three of our controllers plugged in, or four if you have four. I would do four, but I still have enough inputs between all my devices to do so. But I still have enough to prove the point here. Come down to your general settings. So this will let you know where your devices are at and how main will read them. Player one, player two, player three, etc. Now, I do not have the controller profile set for this. All right, so you come down here to our input devices. And as you can tell, I have two USB joysticks, a sim light gun input player two. So I don't have my USBs plugged in yet, so let me go ahead and do that. I got these Bluetooth. All right, let me get out of this and we'll get back into our main. Real settings, input devices. Okay, so the way I want this, I want my Xbox controllers to always be player one through four, or I have three, so one through three. And this controller file is going to give priority to all your controllers to be whatever order you want. Now, the only drawback to the uh, so this method, or really a method at all, just because of the way these controllers are, you cannot set an individual controller to a specific player. For example, if I want this one to always be player one, and this one to always be a player two, the controller profile is just not going to do that for us. But what it will do, it will give priority for these controllers to always be players one through four one through two however you want to be so as you can tell right here they do not have priority so i try to set these up these will go in as players four player five controller six and i don't want that so let's go ahead and change that so go ahead and get out of here go to your uh, ctrlr and you'll find this file in the description, so just download it and put it in here. It's a good template for this. Now, this is just going to cover the X input controllers, and this is what we're looking at here. So let me uh, break this down for you real quick. You have your main configuration version 10 that just tells main that this is a configuration file. This is the name to default, so uh, this is going to take place of the default config file that would be in your configuration. And right now, all that is blank on my end. Uh, this right here is just a uh, note, so has no significance. Now, input in your map devices, this is where your device names goes. So in these parentheses is where you want to put your device names. And right here is where you want to put your joy codes at. 
Of course, all this is pre-made, preset. So go ahead and minimize that. I'm going to come back and do some more editing on this. But let's go ahead and copy the name. All right. And then we're going to come back to your main I and I. And you're going to see a CTRLR down here. I think it's at line 129. Unless you've done some editing to this yourself. So it may be a different line. But it's going to say CTRLR blank. Just paste it right here. And you want to save that. Now, if you're doing this on an existing build, I would recommend to rename your configuration file here. Um, this is just a new build for me, and I'm just going to delete all this. So I don't need none of this. But do do um, rename your configuration files like CFG.BK as a backup in case you don't like these changes or mess up what you currently already have. All right, so now we we'll go to our main. Now this time, we're going to have our X inputs take over one, two, and three. It would be four, but I don't have four player four controllers plugged in. But other than this, it's all going to be plug and play, and I'll show you that as proof. Input devices one, two, three, four, or one, two, and three. Then I can go to our input assignments. Player one controls and all this right here is mapped out to our x input now one way you can tell it is mapped up to x input is right here by the joy one you're going to have letters and right triggers if you're on a d input it would say like joy one button one so that's how you can tell by the input by looking at it what your controller is All right, now let's play a random game. Let's go with some Afterburner. All right, so we'll be using this one right here. Got my coin in. Got my start. What makes this a really unique is there's so many different things you have to do. You have this button. You have this one to use. So we'll go ahead and get our Afterburner. So now we're going fast. That's already mapped. Left, right. Got my bullets. Got that going on. That's already mapped out. Now let's look at a, a four player game. All right, so we're loading up. Again, this is going to be player one. Got this for player three. And then my player two right here. All right, player one shooting, player three shooting, player four shooting, or player two shooting. Okay. Now, if you want to call it quits right there, you're done. There's really nothing more you have to do. Every game will be plug and play from your Neo Geos to your driving games to your beat em up games. The only exception is going to be a fighting games. And I'll go over one example on how to do that. But I will do it in the next video and show you how to mass change those buttons for you. So I don't have to do it for every single game. Um, so let's go ahead and actually first let's change it on the UI. So you do need to make a UI change setting. So come to a general settings and you want to go up to input device assignments. I'm sorry, input assignments. Go to user interface. Now, two things I like to do from here. I like to access my in-game menu from my joystick. And also I want to be able to escape from my game from my control pad. So you'll come down here to cancel. It should also be known as the exit. I'm going to double click that. I'm going to hit my escape. And I always want my keyboard to still have its main function along with the other. All right. So I have my start and back. So all you do is double click on it. You can hold start, then back, and then release. And then you have simultaneously. And we'll do the same thing for our menu here. 
I'm gonna hit my tabs. I still want tab to do it. Hit delete to clear all that. All right, now tab. Now I want to use these buttons right here. Just push in, and that will be your left stick button and your right stick button. So that and it's going to come up as LSB. So that's what that stands for. LSB left stick. RSB, right stick button. And now I can use those to get in and stay out. Save your settings. All right, and now let's uh, save that to our uh, CTRL. Um, normally in a previous video, I mentioned use your default I'm actually preferring this method a lot better than just the CGF and default, but you will find what you need inside this default after you make those changes. Yeah, for example here. Oh, and I'm using a Notepad++. Um, you can use any text editor you want to, but I highly recommend when you're messing with these files, use a Notepad++. It just makes everything easier to really structure out. So we have the port and the port. So I want to copy this port here all the way down to this port. Copy it. And what this means is, of course, the UI menu, standard, and it's keyboard tap, UI cancel, keyboard tab, or keyboard escape. And then we're using start one and select to get out. All right, so I got that saved. Now I want to take that and put that in my CTRL. So I'll go back to our base file here. Go ahead and hit enter a couple times. I want to leave a space. And then I want to right click, hit paste. Now you want this port to be lined up all together. So now hit save. Now you don't have to do this next part, but I'm going to. I'm just going to delete all this. I'm just to prove to you that it's not saved to the config default file. It's all saved to the CTRL. All right, get back into our main and we'll start a game of, I don't know, I get games. Now from your controller, I can just do that. Now I'm in this screen here. as you can tell, you can play uh, three players, so four players, and it's all mapped out here. So player one starts already set for Joy 1, Joy 2, Joy 3, and Joy 4 if I had four buttons. I want to hit this to back out of it. And if I want to escape from the game, just hit Start and Select. I'm out of my game. And I can even use that to exit my main out. <laughs> Okay, I want to show you uh, one more example, and then we're going to call it. And you're basically outside of your fighting games. You're ninety nine percent plug and play with this thing. So we back to our meme and Street Fighter. Who hasn't started out with Street Fighter? Street Fighter Two. Oh, now whenever you do do this uh, next part, you'll always want to make sure that you're on the parent file. Because whenever we save this and we move it to our CTRL, if you do it per game, like a clone, it's not going to save it for the rest of the Street Fighter games. This will save it for every Street Fighter 2 game and every clone of that Street Fighter 2 game that there is. I think it's Street Fighter 2 World Warrior. All right, so I'm going to use this one here. Tab, go to input settings. Now the letter, you got to remember, this is done on a Xbox mapping and not SNES. So when you see A, it's going to be that one there. B is going to be that one. X, Y, L, B, and your triggers. So think... Xbox mapping we're doing this 
So the jab punch is going to be right here. Strong punch is right here. Now, of course, you know, if you play this game, you know, your punches are actually all the way up here. So we're going to go ahead and change that. So I'm going to put that up there. Strong there. Fierce punch. Left button. Kicks going to be your A. Four kicks going to be your B. Roundhouse kicks going to be your R. And we need to do the same thing for player two. Now, we don't need to map the up buttons or coin start or anything. All that's already selected. We just need to change the buttons that we need to change to make this work. Now going down on my player two, doing the same thing. All right, we're mapped out here correctly. Um, let's go ahead and get a quick game in just so we can verify that we are set up correctly on this. All right. Punch, 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 kick, kick, and kick. And we're good. I can face the game with that. We're going to get out of this and we're going to go into our CGF file and we're going to go to the Street Fighter 2 game. Now, the only thing that we're worried about is from the system all the way down the system. Copy that. That already has all our mapping in between. So copy it. Go back to our uh, CTRL file. We're on the X input base. And go to where it says system. Hit enter. And then we're just going to right click. And do make sure everything lines up the way it should as well. Paste. All right, now I see the system's kind of off. I need to get that directly underneath my system. All right, and if you don't, it's not going to work. And all this right here for the uh, BGFX and anything else, delete anything that's not between your inputs. Bring that back. All right, and save that. Now I want to minimize it, close it, whatever you want to do. And get back as a proof of concept that it works. Street Fighter 2. I want to play a different Street Fighter 2. Let's go with a, a clone version. And uh, do -do. Uh, well, you can always check too where it says parent of. Magic K Turbo. This is a parent of Street Fighter 2 Road Warrior. So the controls that we already mapped out should also be saved to this. All right. And there they are right there. And then jab punch. So that's how you can map it per ROM for all its clones. Um, I'll show you how we can do it per system and on even more mass scale. But um, anyways, I hope that helped you all out. And that's how you make these controllers go plug and play on your main system. I will catch you later and we'll get down to some more details and get these fighting games taken care of. You all have a great day.